हरे कृष्ण हरे 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 राम 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 हरे हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासदी घोर भक्त वृंद जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासदी घोर भक्त वृंद हे कृष्णा करुणा सिंधो दीन बंधो जगत पते गोपेश गोपी कांत राधा कांत नमोस्तुते तप्त कंचन गोरंगी राधे वृंदानेश्वरी वृषभानु सुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चेनोत्तम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुदीर तुलसी राधे गुरु का नंद भगवान की भागवतम की हरे कृष्णा हरे राम और ज्योति हरे कृष्णा So, <clears throat> कल हम लोग श्लोक फोर्टी सेकेंड पढ़ रहे थे एंड जैसा कि यू नो वी हैव बीन रीडिंग कपिल मुनि हु इज नॉन अदर देन अवतार ऑफ लॉर्ड विष्णु हिमसेल्फ नो हैज टेकन हैज अपीयर टू कपिल मुनि एंड मदर देवहूति and then thereafter kapil muni has taken sanyas right which means you know he has gone for his moksha meditation and then also advised kapil muni to give transcendental knowledge to mother devhuti so as we know previous chapters um uh, kapil muni has been explaining how this material world has come in existence right what are all the elements which forms this material world right all these 24 elements and then kal which is samay right and the mahat tattva and then how the virat swarup and the everything you know comes into existence with all the devatas and for vayu agni and so on and so forth and then he has been explaining like what is devotional service yeah so he has been explaining bhakti and then recently what we have been reading in this chapter is what are the characteristics of a devotee right who is a pure devotee and what is the significance of pure devotee राइट सो प्योर ड्यूटी के लक्षण क्या है कैरेक्टरिस्टिक क्या है उसके क्या सिग्निफिकेंस है एंड हाउ ही लिव्स हिज लाइफ सो दैट्स व्हाट वी हैव बीन रीडिंग राइट एंड देन आल्सो ही इज एक्सप्लेनिंग जो यस्टरडे वी रीड लाइक आउट ऑफ 8.4 मिलियन स्पीशीज द ह्यूमन बीइंग यू नो इज लाइक काइंड ऑफ ऑन अ हायर स्टेज बेस्ड ऑन व्हाट ही कैन अचीव एंड व्हाट ही कैन डू एंड आउट ऑफ द ह्यूमन बीइंग्स यू नो इट्स द ब्राह्मण इज हायर देन आउट ऑफ द ब्राह्मण the one who can give updesh is higher but even the one who can give updesh on vedas and 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 upanishads the one who is a pure devotee who is totally into devotional service is the highest and purest right so that's the perfection of a human being is to be in devotion and that's what he has been explaining and then kapil muni is saying that everything happens because of the supreme personality of godhead lord shri krishna nothing happens on its own right we know nothing happens on its own right even whatever we do doesn't happen by its own right everything needs to be planned or to be done so the whole world has been running because of supreme personality of godhead is what has been explained right the ocean never overflows right the fire that does the earth mountains don't sink in water and all that is because of uh, <clears throat> because of the supreme personality of godhead yeah so what he has been explaining that's what we read yesterday So we'll continue reading with the shlok forty-three. Yeah, Rasikshya Prabhu ji. No. Namo Dadati Sustatam Padam Yaniya Madhaha Lokam Sa Deham Tanute Mahan Sapt Bhira Vritam. <coughs> Subject to the control of the supreme personality of Godhead, 
the sky allows outer space to accommodate all the various planets which hold innumerable living entities the total universal body expands with its seven covering under the his under his supreme control hari krishna hari krishna yeah so again right like nabho dadati shwa satam satam is like the one who is living entities the people who take um, the breaths right sans lene wale and in nabho in this akash right there are they accommodate various planets and every planet holds innumerable living entities is what is being mentioned and then also say the total universe expands with its seven coverings under the supreme control like no science has been able to explain us like how the whole thing is covered but you know shrimad bhagavatam tells us based on what lord vishnu has given the knowledge is that it's there are seven coverings of each universe very well explained in this purport so let's just read this purport um mataru it is understood from this verse that all the planets in outer space are floating and they all hold living entities the word स्वस्थतम तम मीन्स दोज हू ब्रीत स्वास्थम मीन्स दोज हू ब्रीत और द लिविंग एंटिटीज इन ऑर्डर टू अकोमोडेट दैम देर आर इन्यूमरेबल प्लानट्स एवरी प्लानट इज अ रेजिडेंस फॉर इन्यूमरेबल लिविंग एंटिटीज एंड नेसरी स्पेस इज प्रोवाइडेड इन द स्काई बाय द सुप्रीम ऑर्डर ऑफ द लॉर्ड इट इज ऑल्सो स्टेटेड हियर दैट द टोटल यूनिवर्सल बॉडी इज इंक्रीजिंग it is covered by seven layers and as there are five elements within the universe so the total element elements in layers cover the outside of the universal body the first layer is of earth it is 10 times greater in size than the space within the universe the second layer is water and that is 10 times greater than the earthly layer the third covering is fire which is 10 times greater than the water covering in this way each layer is 10 times greater than the previous one hari krishna hari krishna yeah. so i think you know it's simple that we definitely know there are oceans we have seen how you know large the oceans are and all that but that is what you know the limitation of our knowledge or the scientific knowledge which we have right so it's very difficult to comprehend how big this universe is and how many innumerable number of universes are there right so but all those things in terms of quantitative descriptions are given in bhagavad gita in shrimad bhagavatam right so which is very very interesting uh, <clears throat> anil ji ji yeah. guna abhimanino deva sarga dishasya yadvadayat vartante nu yugam vesham vash etach racharam out of fear of the supreme personality of godhead the directing demigods in charge of the modes of material nature carry out the functions of creation maintenance and destruction everything animate and inanimate within the material world is under their control hari krishna hari krishna so how the demigods even act right deva hai sarga this va ashya yat bhayat so based on supreme personality of godhead's control all the demigods are carrying out their natural duty of creation maintenance and destruction yeah so and it says animate and inanimate like sachet and asachet it's a char achar achar all everything within this material world is under the control of supreme personality of godhead and actually you know this shlokas are very nice purports so i think it'll be great to read those so that we have better understanding uh so let's read this uh, jyoti you are there sai am gajena ha i can read it sure the three modes of material nature namely goodness passion and ignorance are under the control of three deities brahma vishnu and lord shiva lord vishnu is in charge of the mode of goodness Lord Brahma is in charge of the mode of passion, and Lord Shiva is in charge of the mode of ignorance. Similarly, there are many other demigods in charge of the air department, the water department, the cloud department. 
etc. Just as a government has many different departments, so within these material world, the government of the Supreme Lord has many departments and all of these departments function in proper order or of fear of the Supreme Personality of God. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yeah. Ajay? Demigods are undoubtedly controlling all matter, animate and inanimate within the universe, but above them all the supreme controller is the personality of Godhead. Therefore, in the Brahma Samhita it is said, Ishwara Param Krishna. Undoubtedly, there are many controllers in the departmental management of the universe, but the supreme controller is Krishna. The, there are two kinds of dissolutions. One kind of dissolution takes place when Brahma goes to sleep during his night, and the final dissolution takes place when Brahma dies. As long as Brahma does not die, creation, maintenance, and destruction are actuated by different demigods under the super, superintendence of Supreme Lord. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yeah. So I think so such an important fact mentioned here, right? So even Lord Brahma, right? Lord Brahma appeared on the Nabi of Lord Vishnu, right? And but and then we have the Satya Lok, which is the highest lok in this universe, right? Highest lok, which is the Satya Lok where Lord Brahma resides. But we know that even the Lord Brahma has an age. And do you remember how long Brahma's age is described? Is given? What's the expected age of Lord Brahma? Three trillion years, something. Right, right, exactly. 300 plus trillion years. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the age of Lord Brahma. I think very difficult to comprehend for us, right? So after that, there's a total dissolution of everything. Yeah, that's a big problem. But then also there's a dis dissolution during when Brahma, Lord Brahma goes to sleep, right? So you remember what's uh, one day of Lord Brahma? How long is one day of Lord Brahma? Four, four billion, 32 million, or four yeah. trillion, 32 billion. No, four billion, 32 million. That's right, yeah. So one, one day of Lord Brahma is four billion, 32 million years, yeah? And the same is his night. So that's how long the small prelate also remains. Yeah. So it is not just like some story or something, you know, those are the facts given in our spiritual books, uh, which is such an important thing. Yeah. So, uh, but ultimately the point of this shlok is that everything, even in Brahma Samhita, which is Lord Brahma's prayer to Lord Govind, it says very clearly, Ishwara Parama Krishna. And this is what we can read in a lot of Vedas and, and Purans also. Right. So very, very uh, interesting. <clears throat> So ananto antikare hai, kalo anadi radi di kriddhagaya janam janena janayam man, yanam rityuna antikam. So the eternal time factor has no beginning and no end. It is the representative of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the maker of the criminal world. It brings about the end of the phenomenal world. It carries on the work of creation by bringing one individual into existence from another. And likewise, it dissolves the universe by destroying even the Lord of Death, Yamraj. Yeah, it says even Mrityu Anant Antakam. Yeah, and Kal is the time. And so Ananto Antakare. So basically, but the eternal time has no beginning and no end. Yeah, uh, but at the end of the day, everything, including Yamraj, is also, you know, dissolved. And then there's a new thing which takes place. Uh, when a new Brahma comes in, basically. So again, a very nice purport. Let's uh, let's go through it, Anilji. Yeah. By the influence of eternal time, which is the representative of the supreme personality of Godhead, the father begets a son, and the father dies by the influence of cruel death. But by time's influence, even the Lord of cruel death is killed. In other words, all the demigods within the material world are temporary, like ourselves. Our lives last for 100 years at the most. And similarly, 
although their lives may last for millions and billions of years, demigods are not eternal. No one can live within this material world eternally. The phenomenal world is created, maintained, and destroyed by the finger signal of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Therefore, a devotee does not desire anything in this material world. A devotee desires only to serve the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This servitude ex exists eternally. The Lord exists eternally. His servitor exists eternally. And the service exists eternally. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yeah. So I think this pretty much summarizes this chapter, right, of the devotional service and what a pure devotee is. So a devotee desires only to serve the Supreme Personality of Godhead because that's the eternal constitutional nature and the position of the soul. Yeah. And this servitude exists eternally, not materialistically, eternally. Right? The Lord exists eternally. The Supreme Lord exists eternally. So not all the demigods and everyone is in this material universe. But the Supreme Lord exists eternally in the spiritual world and his servitor exists eternally and the service exists eternally is the summary essentially of this particular chapter. Thus ends the Bhakti Vedanta purpose of the third canto 29th chapter of the Srimad Bhagavatam entitled Explanation of Devotional Service by Lord Kapil. So, Srimad Bhagavatam Ki. Jai. Jai. Yeah. Jai. So, so, nicely, you know, it has been explained about the devotional service and about the devotees and about the human beings, right? What should be done? So, now we are getting to chapter 30. So, there are a few more chapters, I think, remaining in Canto 3. So, we are really getting close to completing Canto 3, hopefully, you know, a few more chapters. But the chapter 30, let's continue reading. And chapter 30 is the description of Lord Kapil of adverse fugitive activities. So last chapter was about the devotional activities, like what should be done as a devotional service and who can do it and all that. Now it's other way around. Like if we don't get into devotional service, what happens to a general human being or a general living entity, right? We are conditioned. So you know how things go on is what Lord Kapil is telling to Mother Dehuti and it's so important to know so that, you know, it, it, it gets related and we know what happens if you don't get devoted to the uh, Lord Krishna's service and how the time flies is basically, I think, what is being explained by uh, Kapil Muni in this particular um, chapter. So, Tarun. Kapil Vacha. Tatyestasya Juno Nuna Nayam Vedoru Vikramam Kalyas Manopi Balino Vayo River Danavaliha. The personality of Godhead said, As a mass of clouds does not know the powerful influence of the wind. A person engaged in material consciousness does not know the powerful strength of the time factor by which he is being carried. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yeah. So if you are a person in totally engaged in material consciousness, which we know, right, 80%, 90% of us are totally into material consciousness, right, running behind money or running behind whatever else, and we just don't know what's going on, what is being mentioned here by Kapil Muni is that we don't know the powerful strength of the time factor, the kal, right? The kalya mano api balino. We don't know how, and he's comparing this like vayo, ghanavali, like ghan, the clouds, right? Don't know the powerful influence of the way, is what Kapil Muni is saying. And again, a very nice uh, purport. Um, is Shikshan Prabhuji? Ah. The great politician Pandit named Chanakya said that even one moment of the time cannot be returned even if one is prepared to pay millions of dollars. One cannot calculate the amount of loss. A loss. There is a vasting variable time, either, either materially or spiritually, one should be very alert in utilizing the time which he has at his disposal. A conditioned soul lives in a particular body 
for a fixed measurement of time and it is recommended in the scriptures that within that small measurement of time one has to finish krishna consciousness and thus gain release from the influence of the time factor but unfortunately those who are not in krishna consciousness are carried away by the strong power of the time without their knowledge as clouds are carried by the wind hare krishna hare krishna thank you prabhu ji <clears throat> so i think very important part mentioned here is that a conditioned soul lives in a particular body for a fixed measurement of time yeah and there is no dispute to that we definitely know like everybody has a fixed measurement of time whatever it is yeah it can be 100 maybe maybe worst case 110 150 whatever but there is a fixed measurement of time right so it is recommended in the scriptures that within that small measurement of time and you know we can see our past history how the time has been flying <laughs> and, and you know the time has been passed and what have we really achieved right so it says that within that time we need to finish the krishna consciousness or at least get to the stage where krishna consciousness is solid right so it is mentioned that even if we take birth again at least we can take birth as a krishna conscious a person or individual soul so that we can continue that progress right so that's what is being mentioned here let's do one more slow shlok uh, jyoti Hare Krishna. Yeah. So as we know, the Kapil Muni is now describing what happens to the materialistic thing, right? We work hard, you know, with Dukhain to get little bit of happiness, right? But ultimately, what happens is, you know, the time factor, as we know, right? That everything is destroyed at some point in time, is what is being mentioned. Um, so. Ajay, if you read this, please. The main function of the time factor, which is representative of supreme personality of Godhead, is to destroy everything. The materialists in material consciousness are engaged in producing so many things in the name of economic development. They think that by advancing and satisfying the material needs of man, they will be happy. but they forget that everything they they have produced will be destroyed in terms of time hari krishna hari krishna i think we are going to pause here since we only have one minute left yeah and we'll continue reading reading this tomorrow at 9:20 pm <laughs> and we'll continue hearing this week shri ram's dhun this is from karnataka one of the procession of ram navmi so hari krishna see you tomorrow <laughs> Thank you.